segue, by the way. Speaking of origin stories, we're going to watch some... Uh, uh, then what happens? We're going to watch this video because, uh, yeah, seems like... Seems like this. Seems like we visited by the. Seems like we got visited by the person, who made these videos. Uh, which is cool. I like. I like. I like when people visit me. Creators, if you want, um, I can always. Uh, we can always collaborate on something in the future because I do like my historical content. I do like my essays. So, uh, hit me up if you want to. My business email is on my Twitter. Mm, I'm speaking of socials. There you go. There you go. Feel free to follow these socials if you want to. If you want to, uh, I'm gonna watch your. Uh, I'm gonna watch this video right now. Uh, SS Richard Montgomery, uh, ticking time bomb waiting to explode. This is a story of an explored bomb, a shipwreck set on a sea bed at the mouth of the Thames, uh, Thames estuary, with thousands of tons of TNT on board. What are you were confused about, Andy? Tell me, what did you, what were you confused about? I just might help you with this confusion. Um, we'll still start watching the video now. It bomb sat on the seabed mm -hmm. off the coast of England. In fact, there's 15,000 of them and mm. they could explode at any moment. If they did, the blast could be the biggest non-nuclear explosion in history, causing a 13-meter-high tsunami that raced towards London. So the question is, what can be done to disarm this ticking time bomb? This is the SS Richard Montgomery shipwreck. This is the bomb in the Thames. Okay, the I didn't know that was one. an American military cargo ship that was traveling from Philadelphia to London packed with the delivery of ammunition and explosives for use in World War II. As she approached London, a heavy storm hit. The ship drifted into shallow waters and hit a sandbank. The hull split into two, and she sank. Salvage crews worked day and night to offload the explosives on board, but when the UK government refused to pay workers fairly for the risks they were exposed to, all salvage efforts stopped leaving the equivalent of 1,560 metric tons of TNT still on board. It, it really goes to show um, how chaotic that time was. Just how much, of a, how much of a catastrophe this war was. If you have these kinds of stories. Oh, nice, nice, nice. No, you found me through a, through a shared song we did. We're doing the song together. I am the observer. I am the I am the person in the, in the whole on the whole Halloween chat. I talk to you at some point. You found me through our thing together. If I'm not mistaken, you are one of the people from the. Let me see. From from the Ivy's place. Ah, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's fun. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, pretty sure I saw you uh, following my Twitter, so that's that's something. But yes, uh, it really goes to show how much of a chaotic time it was, considering everything was kind of going going insane, and these kinds of shipwrecks were left unattended to for so long. Uh, and I was the World War Two was definitely a time, isn't it? Wasn't it? including phosphorus bombs, cluster fragmentation bombs, and high explosive bombs weighing nearly 1,000 kilograms. This is what a single 1,000 kilogram high explosive bomb looks like. It was discovered on the campus of the University of Exeter in England and exploded with a controlled detonation. Buildings within 100 meters of the blast were damaged. A large crater was formed and debris was thrown 250 meters away. 
This mm -hmm. bomb contained the equivalent of 0.6 metric tons of TNT. And here is what an explosion with the equivalent of 1,100 metric tons of TNT looks like. This blast in Beirut in 2020. Uh, Beirut explosion is one of the scariest thing I saw. Because look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Mm. Look at this. This blast. Look at this. See? You know what I mean? You can, you can, you can literally see the buildings evaporating right over here. See what I mean? This Look at this. Blast. Look at this. That was that's that was an explosion. I saw it from several angles because I discovered videos again, a few videos about this on uh, TikTok again, or was it shorts? Something about that. Basically, on shorts or even TikTok on shorts, I discovered videos about this explosion in Beirut, and it was uh, <laughs> it was pretty much it's pretty it was pretty terrifying for to look at it. Don't worry though, uh, what then what happens is the the editing is is uh, the, the, editing, the editing is good. It's good. I'm just I'm just I'm just one. I just want to demonstrate this. This carnage here. Last in Beirut in 2020 happened when a fire broke out in a warehouse containing ammonium nitrate. It caused $15 billion worth of damage, and the shockwave was felt as far away as Turkey, Syria, and even Cyprus, over <clears throat> yep. 240 kilometers away. So it's staggering to think that the SS Richard Montgomery is carrying a cargo of explosives far more powerful and destructive than this. And yet almost nothing has been done to make them safe. Of course nothing has been done. On the website like, like, like leak, more videos were popped up, uh, but more damage and shit. Yeah, obviously. But of course nothing has been done. You know how um, a lot of politicians and a lot, a lot of stuff operate on complacency. That's how they operate on. Um, as long as nothing bites bites them in the ass, they would rather swipe swipe this under the rug and pretend it's not there, uh, than actually do something about it. So instead of just picking the snake up, right, the poisonous snake that that snake that snuck snuck into your room, they just instead of picking it up and carrying it up or like calling someone to to take it out, what they do is uh, they. Uh, they kick it under the under the rug or under the carpet right and they keep kick it under the carpet or under the bed and pretend it's not there and uh even the snake yeah they just pretend it's not there and if the snake decides to bite the, bite them on the ankle poison them and kill them they will scream and lament on how does this how did this happen we did not anticipate this to happen what oh woes what should i do oh woes what shall i do how could this happen to me i'm so i'm, I'm so innocent i'm so i'm so terrified <laughs> but obviously they could have just they could have taken the snake out they could have called someone to take the snake out but they didn't they pretended the snake wasn't there because uh, doing otherwise would cost something insignificant, like effort, time, or talking to someone. Instead, they paid the price. Something that happened in Beirut as well. Uh, they didn't. They, they pretended it wasn't there for a while, and then it exploded in their faces. Same here. Until uh, one day, we'll get a news report about. Half of the world's, uh, half of the Europe, sh uh, half of the British Isles shaking uh, because of an explosion of a uh, metric ton of T TNT underneath the, the sea. Uh, they will pretend it wasn't there. Now we know the scale of the explosives on board. What risk does it pose today? Scientists predict that if the wreck were to explode, 
tower of water, mud and shrapnel would be sent three kilometers into the air. Every window in a 50 kilometer radius would be shattered. A 13 meter high tsunami would race up the River Thames, heading straight into the city of London. The River Thames has an inbuilt flood barrier to protect against rising water levels, but these but. take 90 minutes to raise, far too slow to give London any protection if the wreck was to explode. And in the other direction, the wall of water would float directly towards one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Nearby Absolutely. to the wreck is Europe's biggest natural gas storage site. Mm. In the event of a tsunami caused by the blast, experts are concerned that a secondary, much bigger explosion could occur. Similar to the blast at the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan in 2000. Of course, of course, of course, Edward. So what do you do with a problem like the SS Richard? You ignore it, obviously, because that's how that's how the world operates. Montgomery. And then after the dust settles, whatever, whenever that one, or if the explosion ever occurs, and if the something isn't done before the explosion ever occurs, what they will do is proceed to point fingers at each other and blame each other for everything. Hmm. Uh, but just, just, uh, yeah, just, uh, just, just, uh, so Merlin will send me some stuff, and I can understand that definitely there is definitely some risk of setting it off, like sending the bob off, right? There is a risk. Ah, oh, fuck me. Hey, Ace, thank you for the bonk. Uh, ouchie. Oh, fucking, fucking ouchie. Sorry, I'm speaking about Brit British government right now. British government. <laughs> Love you too, Ace. Love you too. <laughs> Love you too, Ace. <laughs> heart, heart emoji, heart emoji. <laughs> Love you too. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you this heart emoji. Love you too. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I'm speaking about big, a big, a big ton of bombs on the underneath the tent. Like, there's definitely uh, an ability. There is definitely a possibility that they will exp it will explode in their faces if they try to push it out or like do something with it or like tinker with it i know i do agree on that front but there is uh, also uh, there is also very much not not a lot of uh, profit in like uh, leaving it be just kind of okay we, we, we're just afraid of it exploding so we just kind of let it be but there is a high risk of someone accidentally destroyed it because of the best sales uh busiest sales route in uh in the uk <laughs> but there is a higher risk of someone actually destroyed. Yep, yep, yep. There is a higher. If it's the busiest route, uh, busiest tra trade route in the UK, it's definitely one of the is very an incredible risk because any wave, any uh, any passing current, any disturbance could could potentially detonate the bombs. So at least, at the very least, there should be an investment in it, like an investment in actually trying to push pull them out or like disarm them probably <laughs> probably if he was around at world war ii he probably set them up <laughs> experts agreed that the best time to dismantle the bombs was in august 1944 when the ship first sank yeah but the second best time is today a risk assessment published by the uk government said that the wreck would start to collapse in 10 to 20 years uh yeah collapse and that the explosion of one bomb could start a chain reaction across the 14 to 16000 bombs on board yeah it's uh it's basically yes yes ace you you showed up after after you um after the is was stated you ever saw the explosion at beirut you ever saw that the big uh, well this is this uh, this ship contains um that uh, but like 500 ton or more tnt yeah it's just basically it's, it contains that amount of bombs the same amount of bombs that caused uh, that would have caused um the explosion at beirut But 
but also 500 tons and tons more uh, they are interesting i like them doing nothing according to the report was no longer an option yeah, so the little will become increasingly likely time had run out <laughs> that report was published in 2001 oh brother since then those in charge of the wreck have made very little progress can't we just send in a bomb squad to take out the explosives? But the reality is, after decades of sitting underwater, it's impossible to establish what condition the explosives are in. Nobody really knows if they're safe or ready to blow. Yeah, there's also a possibility that this is all a scare and they already the the bombs themselves deteriorated uh, de deteriorated under under the uh, seawater. The components that were built, uh, that the bulbs are usually built by, are not exactly waterproof. And any interference with the wreck, even just to disarm the bombs, only increases the risk further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The government has faced a challenge like this before. In 1946, a similar American ship carrying a mix... <laughs> the boys and I explode the busiest trade route in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, f f fuck the British. Fuck the British. Uh, you know, this is li literally how... Uh, if you... Uh, uh, fuck, uh, f f fuck you. Uh, detonates the largest bomb supply in the world... Uh, underwater in the world. Causing a massive tsunami to, to, go, to go drown the London. <laughs> ...of explosives and equipment sank off the coast of Folkestone in England. In the recovery attempt, 100 metric tons of explosives on board were accidentally detonated. Yeah. This caused a 150 meter high column of water, a magnitude 4.5 earthquake, and 6.4 kilometers away in Folkestone, buildings were damaged. The SS Richard Montgomery Whoops. has 1,460 metric tons more explosives on board. Hmm. Yeah, uh, this is a very tricky Removing situation. the bombs safely presents a huge risk and a logistical challenge. Yeah. Even to discover the current state of the bombs, planning and surveys of the wreck would take years. It would require over 40,000 people to evacuate their homes during the recovery efforts. And this process is likely to take at least six months. It seems safely disposing of the cargo is just out of the question. Hmm. So what else can be done? Official documents show plans for an enormous Chernobyl-style sarcophagus built around the wreck. Then, with the blast area contained, a controlled detonation would safely destroy the cargo. But now we know we're in the period where the bombs are at their most sensitive. Any construction project of this magnitude would only increase the chance of triggering the bombs rather than reducing the risk. Hmm. I guess that the snake, uh, the poison snake analogy was very correct because that's ultimately how you, uh, you can try to disarm the, uh, to get, take the, out the snake, but this, it presents a risk because it can bite you, it can, it can bite you either way or whoever you decide to invite. So I guess the, Poison snake was accurate. Uh, it's just that you still need to try, at least. It will bite you anyway. At least you need to try to take it out. Is what I think. Another proposed solution is to build a 1.8 kilometer wide coffer dam around the wreck. Hmm. Once in place, any explosion, intentional or not, would be protected within the walls. This sounds great in theory, but when we consider the fragility of the wreck and her contents and the intense groundwork needed to build a dam around the wreck. Once again, this solution only increases the risks involved. Mm. This is probably why each government in charge have so far chosen a third option, do nothing. Since the ship sank over 78 years ago, the UK government have done almost nothing. Each new administration simply passes on the responsibility to the next. Mm. You know the fact that it is, it is so close to surface. It's unnerving to the in the first place. It's very unnerving. Spontaneous combustion is not the only concern about the SS Richard Montgomery.
There's also the possibility of human error, a yeah. someone interfering with the wreck. The government established a 100 meter wide exclusion zone to deter people from coming too close. But there's always going to be people who want to take a look, want to take a gander at this uh, old mystery. Like, look at this ancient wreck of a ship, because there's always going to be dumb SS who are going to do that, obviously. But despite this, the masts have become a legendary local landmark. In the 1960s, people used to climb aboard the masts to fish. Tourist boat trips at low tide are a regular occurrence. And then, boom, exactly. Someone, someone decides to go in, someone decides to, to take a dive, maybe find some treasure in the ancient, uh, in the ancient, uh, touches something or like pushes something over, it falls, and then, and yeah, and just half the, and half the British Isles are going to be shaking for a while. 2017, a paddleboarder posted this picture on social media of him holding on to the mast themselves. And it's not just tourists that are the problem. Between 1944 and 1978, 28 ships reported a near-miss collision. Then, in 1980, in foggy conditions, a cargo ship traveling through the nearby shipping lane drifted off course and came within 15 meters of the wreck. In the same year, oh. a tanker carrying 1,597 metric tons of poisonous and flammable chemicals found itself oh. on a direct course with the wreck due to poor visibility. A collision was only avoided six minutes before the ship would have slammed directly into the wreck. Since then... The oh, so it's like basically, uh, basically it, it, was, it would have been if... Uh, a, a ship full of dynamite decided to run run into a ship another ship full of dynamite double the fun double the explosive fun woohoo the number of near misses has not been made public but what we do know is that over 5000 vessels pass by the wreck each year with the coast guards occasionally being called in to help with the safe evacuation of boats that steered too close in all the years since the ship sank, the first significant action was taken in October 2021. UK-based company Briggs Marine Contractors were Thanks. awarded... <sighs> UK, UK-based... Uh, 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 okay, uh, that, that, that needs to be clipped. That needs to be clipped. I don't, I don't care. That needs to be clipped. Give me a moment. They were awarded dicks. Okay, fair enough. That's a good award. Thank you for the wonderful timing, Uni. Uh, UK Bricks Company dicks. <laughs> UK Company. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 that, 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 that's absolutely fair. That's absolutely fair. Let's continue. Contract at a value of 4.6 million pounds, mm -hmm. 6.2 million dollars. In removing the masts, the government aims to reduce the pressure they put on the hull and the cargo, or maybe it could be a way of deterring visitors by removing the iconic local landmark. That is a bit of a, mm, that is a bit of a dangerous move though. Since the plans were published to remove the masts, tourist trips to see them have been so popular that local boat owners have been putting on extra trips to meet the demand. People want a last chance to see the masts and imagine what lies beneath before they disappear forever. There's no doubt that shipwrecks like this, especially ones with thousands of unexploded bombs, they carry a certain drama uh, and power yeah. that make for yeah. great headlines around the world. They but do. the residents living near the Thames and its estuary including the Isle of Sheppey, Southend-on-Sea, 
and the city of London. Uh. And for the 5,000 ships that pass by the wreck each year, every day they take their lives in their hands, just hoping the bombs don't explode. Uh, that's... That is, that's pretty scary though. <laughs> that is pretty scary in a lot of ways. Uh... When you really think about it, there's just so much, there is a, such a, there is a possibility each day that uh, something explodes. It's basically living in, uh, in like that town in uh, Fallad when that was built all around. That's fair. That's fair. Mm, I would say it's like su super old. It's, it's good though. I like it. If you, uh, again, if you would like to, if you would like to, uh, do something, yeah, do something with the, with the VTuber person, that'd be cool. <laughs> uh, I, I do, I do like documentaries. One of maybe my favorite things to, to, to watch and to think about this, uh, about is documentaries. So I would be very happy to assist in any endeavor. Plus, I do have a very distinct accent to myself, so I guess that's something that's something to note. Good stuff. I subscribed. Uh, gonna wait whatever for whatever you guys post next. That's cool. I like it. Uh, I'm <laughs> glad glad you decided to jo to jump into my stuff. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very um, I'm very historically interested uh next one is half done wonderful i'm very curious about the history of things like the uh, folklore all the, the all the histories all the small things that happened in the in the world i have a lot of topics i found interesting and i just need to research now but uh yeah again uh, business email in the twitter if you ever if you ever need a, an additional hand in uh, narration or like um content product production whatever i want okay let's watch what should i what should we read? yeah let's watch vr chat what should what, next one we should watch is a vr chat something of vr chat good good stuff though um good stuff though but you didn't tell me you wouldn't watch my video because I don't have a verification mark. I don't like it on, my, on video because some people say that's the thing that's every video this would do, which is... Right. I don't care. Like, honestly, I don't care. Like, one of my things about me is that I really don't care about video. What videos, as long as it's TOS, as long as it doesn't give me get me in trouble, I will watch it. I like I like watching it. I like people. I like watching people's creations. I like watching people, uh, what people like to watch. Like what 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 is the likes? I watched I watched a random video about a mother and her children eating eating Minecraft ice cream. I watched that. It was it was entertaining for the what it was. I didn't I didn't say anything. It had like it had like a five hundred views or something. I watched that. I'm not I'm not see see what I watch. See what I watch? Uh, I watch these two, but I also watch uh, I watch a lot of these kind of videos. But I also watch see naked naked all the stuff. But I watched a lot of other few things today. So yeah, I I like history. I like documentaries. I like um, the voice sound. So the, the narrator sounds nice, though. Uh, that's what I say. The uh, the narration in general was good. Uh, the editing wasn't like overly complicated, which I enjoy in in documentaries. You only really need to like uh, minimal editing in this kind of things. Uh, longer, longer documentaries obviously require much more efforts, but these kinds of things definitely don't really need a lot of. Don't don't I don't believe they need too much editing, if you know what I mean. Thank you for, uh, thank you for sending me those. Let's know. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Very good. <laughs> you also clicked it. Yeah, you also clicked it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, 
I uh, I can definitely uh, you should see the one I will purchase purchase to make babies with photographer. I personally like the video they did that in the video before that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. See the video for 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 tries to make babies with the father. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, that's fair. Uh, what is this? I can Um. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. 